Jackie Chan's speech at the end. Is it better than Rocky's speech at the end of Rocky IV? <laughs> Welcome back to Ethan in Action. I'm your host, Ethan Bow. I'm joined here by Peter. And today we are going to review Rumble in the Bronx. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. Directed by Stanley Tong. Cinematography by Jingle Ma, who became a pretty prestige director by himself. Hmm. FYI. Google it. <laughs> Stunt coordinator slash director is, of course, Jackie Chan and Stanley Tong. First set piece. First fight scene we will break down is the supermarket fight. The setup. Jackie Chan plays Kiang, a Hong Kong cop. This was left out of the American version for no reason. He travels to New York to attend his uncle's, uh, wedding. While helping out at his uncle's supermarket, some local hooligans start causing trouble. Kiang intervenes. <laughs> Thank you for telling me he's a cop. I had no idea he was a cop. <laughs> so this was uh, pretty much Jackie Chan's like kind of breakout role, eh? This is what uh, kind of made him big in Hollywood or like got him noticed. Like before this, you know, he had those failed attempts like Cannonball Run and um, what's that other one? Uh, uh, Protector? Protector. Yeah, that Protector. Oh, terrible movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for me, this was actually my first very exposure actually to Jackie Chan. This I, I saw like the trailer. And I was like, who is this Asian guy? Asian <laughs> badass guy. I got to go watch this movie. Who's this so, Asian guy with big arms? <laughs> I know. He's Jack. He's one of us, but he's got big arms. <laughs> yeah. He's got biceps. <laughs> Because I was, like, during this time, I was used to the, the, the like, the slow lumbering guys, like, you know, Sly and uh, Van Arnold, Van Damme, and his, like, slow movement and kill choreography and everything, so. Yeah, like the block, one, two, punch, and yeah. pause. Yeah, that's what I was used to, so seeing the, uh, that trailer, was like, I'm in. It felt really good revisiting this. It's weird, because in a post-MMA, post-UFC, post-Raid, mm -hmm. post-Dark Knight, where everything's dark and gritty, whereas this is so lighthearted and fun and it still had so much impact in the choreography. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, it had that like the lightness you you kind of mentioned, but there's also some really intense sequences yes. as well. Right. Uh, the first thing that really caught my attention, because I had never really seen it before, was Jackie's speed. His speed and his movements, like just taking those four guys down, just blah 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 blah, moving around. It's like I'd never seen that before. Uh, like I, you know, I I watched Bruce Lee and so I I got a sense of it. But seeing Jackie do it in this kind of environment where you, you, you see the full... Because the way it was shot, like you saw every his every movement, right? So that that just wowed me. I, that got my attention right away, and I had to... Yeah, I had to see more Jackie after that. It also shows the contrast between him and Bruce, right? Because Jackie made a bold effort to be different. Because Bruce would punch straight, and Jackie would be more circular. So he would move around his opponents. And he's moving more like open hand style. I got to say, when I saw Jackie come out of the airport, like smiling, all confident, standing proud, okay. I got so many hints and vibes of Simu Liu at Comic-Con <laughs> when they announced him as like Shang-Chi. Ah, uh, okay. Just the way Simu carries himself. It was just like Jackie and Rumble, that smile, that confidence, that charisma. I'm pretty sure Kevin Feige hired him for that because he got that warmth Jackie Chan 95 vibe. He got that from Jackie vibe. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. That's what I think. So I think they're on a right it's a good casting choice mm -hmm. and I think they're on the right path. Man, I I'm I'm Shang so excited for that movie. Cannot wait. Yeah, the the all the behind the scenes stuff like all the the director they hired and and the the kind of supporting cast they put around them. I'm really excited to see that. that and he's a Toronto guy. What of us? Oh man, that's so awesome too. Yeah. <laughs> Out of five, how do you want to rate this supermarket fight? Uh, it's you know it's a really short sequence, so I I can't go a full Monty or anything on it. Uh, but it's a three out of five just because that speed that he moves, that right there, that is like oh I'm in, I'm in on Jackie Chan. Okay, I'll give him four. Yeah, well because uh, like I said, it was good to return to the style of fighting, this lightheartedness, but still brutal. Next thing we're gonna break down is the back alley fight, the setup. The local hooligans retaliate. They lure Kyung to a back alley. Kyung must fight his way out. This was a great little kind of showcase for like uh, Jackie Chan's athleticism. So if you're new to Jackie, this scene was kind of him just doing, you know, giving a little appetizer as far as uh, stuff he's going to do later on. But like you get that really 
him like kind of bouncing around and using the environment and like you know, everything that's around him he he's kind of choreographing and and moving around and really inputting those those little things into the scene so perfectly this was like a cross between a Jackie Chan fight and a Madonna Janet Jackson music video what's with the fashion <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be the 90s, but they're they're straight out of the 80s with their, their fashion. Like, two guys are dressed like Bebop and Rocksteady from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Jokes aside, this was a pretty well-filmed scene. I'm actually stealing this analysis from Sam Hargrave. I didn't come up with this myself. Okay. But when he was on Scott Atkins' podcast, great show, better than ours. <laughs> Yeah, when he was on there, uh, he was talking about how they were talking about like the raid style, where the raid, the the rhythm is just fight, 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 fight. There's like no breaks. Yeah. Whereas Jackie is like fight, 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 pause, big stun, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. guy flips, you know, fight, 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 fight pause, yeah, yeah. big move. It's almost like hypnosis in a way, because mm-hmm. there's like a rhythm to the movement and the sound effects, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. you're you're just kind of drawn in more. I, I just find it a lot more interesting this style, this beat that yeah. he has. Yeah, definitely. Like his. The rhythm of his scenes, they're just, they are, like, as you said, hypnotic. It, it really draws you in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course, you gotta, I love his fashion where he's like the light, light blue <laughs> jeans and the, <laughs> the white sneakers. Yeah. Well, one thing, I kind of want to go back to some of the comedic aspect of it. Like, so these, these hooligans, <laughs> as you've called them, <laughs> it's so funny. Like, so the, the movie itself was basically, they, they shot the movie, everyone kind of like spoke their language or whatever. And then uh, in post production, they, uh, they um, ADR'd or like overdubbed or everyone just dubbed their dialogue again. Right. The guys they chose to do the dubbing for the hooligans, it's so Every single hooligan is like a giant stereotype. Spanish yeah, there's, guy. there's a Spanish guy. There's like a like a Rastafarian. There's like well, a- the lead guy Tony. He talks like how I talk when I do the setups. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> hey Angelo, is that him? <laughs> Yeah, that's him. What accent is that? <laughs> it's a Canadian dude in New York. <laughs> Best line delivery in the movie. <laughs> when Angela points the gun and uh, Tony grabs it. <laughs> what the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> oh. What the hell do you think you're doing? You asshole. Best <laughs> line in the movie. He's, he's like whining. He sounds like he's about to cry when he says that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, hilarious stuff. But the uh, that part though, when Jackie runs, you know, he he's get he's like um, boxed in, and they're they're doing the bottles. Um, for me, that was actually pretty intense. The that was some. It felt really brutal. Like some of the the shots Jackie was taking, and uh, I remember the one shot specifically where he's actually laying on the ground, and the broken glass kind of like slides into him. I was like, oh damn. Um, and apparently, like, so because this was like my first Jackie, I didn't know like. So I, I guess I, in a way, I, I didn't realize that uh, you know he could get this kind of intense. Yeah. Well, even Jackie himself was worried about it mm-hmm. when he filmed that scene. He's mm-hmm. like, because he knows his um, the type of style he gives. Mm-hmm. He's like, is this too dark? Am I mm-hmm. going too far? Yeah, yeah. Because if it was pretty dark, dark was... Jackie. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Out of five, how do you want to rate this? Uh, I give this one a 3.5 out of five. Okay. Yep. Good stuff. I gave it a five, actually. Oh, full five. Full, yeah, full five. <laughs> full five. As a kid, when, I'm like, when I think Jackie Chan action scene, mm-hmm. this scene pops in my mind mm-hmm. instantly. Really? Okay. Next thing we got is the parking garage fight. The setup. The 40-year-old hooligans attack again. Kyung is chased into a parking garage. Will he escape? 40-year-old hooligans. <laughs> oh, my God. Now that you said that, <laughs> it's like the glass breaking. and <laughs> Oh, my God. I can really see it. They're supposed to be like teenagers, I guess. <laughs> I think so Are because uh, that girl, Francois Yip, is supposed to be 20 and 22. Oh, yeah. So I think they're supposed to be 24, 25. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the scene, though, like I, I could watch Jackie Chan do parkour all day. Man, just even simple stuff. Like just him like hopping... From one the the roof of a car to another roof of a car, and the guy's swinging it like it's it's like a simple move, simple you know avoiding getting hit or whatever. But it just it looks so smooth and just so cool. Like I don't know, just everything Jackie does. Anytime he moves on screen, I just I can't take my eyes off the screen. Well, you always want to root for him too, right? Because yeah. he's so overwhelmed. 
literally every corner there's a hooligan with a bat or a yeah. car coming at him, right? Yeah, yeah. So when he escapes, it's so satisfying for us as a viewer. We're like, yes. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen a truck in the back where it's open full of balls? No. That that would look fun. <laughs> That'd be like a big invitation sign that, hey, come jump in my truck. <laughs> Never seen that. No. <laughs> totally unrealistic, but whatever. Yeah, especially cool. if as soon as he starts driving, those balls are flying. Those are like like really light balls. There's, there's no weight to them. They're gonna fly all over the place. <laughs> You're losing all of your inventory. <laughs> okay, now on to a serious matter. Oh, no. Let's talk about this because we have to. <laughs> the jump. The jump. The jump. The jump. The, the, in my opinion, the, the great jump. <laughs> did he do it? I think he did. I think he did. You, you kind of know the backstory as far as um, when they were coming up with the, the sequence. Tell our audiences. Right? They might yeah. not know. What happened? So Stanley Tong... Um, kind of a badass himself you know so he you know before he asked his um actors to do any stunts or anything anything major he wants to do it himself just you know um give them that peace of mind or whatever right so uh so he performed the stunt but he he kind of used the harness as he did it um and then i'm not sure if it was him that decided or jackie um that they felt like the harness was not a good idea or whatever. So they, I think it was Stanley that decided. Stanley, okay. he said he, it was more uh, dangerous. Dangerous, with yeah, the with the harness, right? right? Yeah. So, so then, yeah, um, and then the scene itself when they filmed it, they you know they used four different cameras filming at the same time with four different angles. Uh, I really believe Jackie made the jump. It, it looks awesome if if he did. Uh, and you know they you know when they they were filming it. Uh, Jackie couldn't see where he was going to be landing because the the car was kind of blocking his view, right? So right. they kind of the, marked the car off with tapes of where he actually needed to initiate the jump. Um, so yeah, I totally believe he made the jump and it's an amazing stunt. Okay. <laughs> now let's get your view. <laughs> Before I say anything, Jackie Chan's my hero. I never want to take anything away from him. Greatest action star of all time. Legit. Next part I'm going to say is if White Tiger... Grabbed me and gun to my head. Did Jackie make the jump? And where are my diamonds? I'd be like, yes, he did. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, per- I think he did. But the reason why I have my doubts is because of the way it's cut together. Because the only two times you see Jackie's face is when he's jumping off the car. And that could be insert shot done anywhere. And when he lands. And that could be done just him jumping in the air and falling. It's just the wise don't you don't see his face clearly, so that's my only reason for doubting. But I'm pretty sure he's, he did it though. He's an athlete. So how would like if he did make the jump? How would you cut it together so that it it was obvious? Like would you just stick on the stay with the camera that's in the kind of the hallway of the the building, and that way you see him come jumping towards? That would the be camera? a pretty sweet shot. That would not? actually be, a pretty, be sweet pretty cool. Shot. Or even have a camera above that mm-hmm. hallway. Seeing him jump into it, mm-hmm. like I, I get what they were going for at the time, and you know, yeah, they, they had those wide shots, and then you know, obviously you can't see his face, right? Um, but yeah, I still believe, totally believe that he. But he I wouldn't did be it. surprised if it was Stanley Tong <laughs> that we saw. I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. but whoever I would... did make that jump, they're badass. Though. Out of five, how do you want to rate this, uh, Ellie? What did okay, the chase? I gave the chase a four out of five. I really liked um, a lot of the aspects of the the chase itself. Jackie doing the parkour. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the one stunt man that had to kind of drive through that uh, parking gate that came down. <laughs> okay. Still, yeah, look, like when you saw the outtakes, like that guy took a big hit. That that was a hard hit. So, I want to shout out to that stunt man. <laughs> Good stuff. I give it a four myself. Yeah, great scene. Quintessential Jackie Chan '90s scene. It's great. <laughs> this whole movie is basically the best of Jackie in the '90s, to be honest. Basically, yeah. <laughs> essentially. Next scene we're gonna break down is the gang hideout brawl. The setup. The 40-year-old hooligans attack again. Wait, that's not the right one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, it is. Let me do it again. Well, if they don't attack, he attacks them. <laughs> I had to read. <laughs> All right, now, let's do it again. 40-year-old hooligans attack again. Kyung has had enough. He heads right into their hideout to start a rumble in the Bronx. <laughs> Oh, man, you used the title. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Take a shot. Oh, man. Uh, I really loved finally getting to see, like, an aggressive Jackie. Because, like, 
throughout the the whole movie before the scene like he's always you know the guy running away or whatever it's awesome to see him like take the fight and you know really take it to the hooligans those 40 year olds <laughs> let's give a little shout out to tony or uh, the actor mark Akerstream. he actually died a few years after filming this oh really yeah oh, that's sad yeah like like a couple of years after or... yes okay during the did he, uh, did he do any more stuff after you, you know did you read his IMDb page or anything? Or? Uh, from what I read, he was filming the Crow TV show, the Mark ah. DeCasco's TV show. And there was a stunt, um, like a boat exploding. He wasn't even part of the scene, but he was there for whatever reason. And debris hit him in the head and he oh, passed. Oh, shit. So it was an accident. Like, yeah. Wow. Total accident. Damn, that's, that's, that's tragic, piece. man. Best line delivery in the movie. <laughs> Absolutely. What the Iconic. hell do you think <laughs> you're doing? <laughs> D'Angelo. So let's talk about Jackie punching those two random guys. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guys. <laughs> There's just head turn. I I had the the same kind of um reaction. Like I was like, oh those guys are just you know they're they're at the party and these guys are fighting and they just want to watch. <laughs> um, world star. But then they get punched out. <laughs> They they do actually join the fight later on. They though, do, so, you know. But Jack can punch them it. first, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> if I got punched for no reason, yeah, I'd probably join the fight. This little Asian guy punches me for no reason. This is also the last movie that I can remember Jackie doing a five forty kick. Five forty? Does he do a, which which part does he do the five forty? Uh he does it twice. So he does a modified five forty onto the table on the pool table. All right, yeah. To Tony. Oh yeah. Then he does another five forty kick over a fridge. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Into a spinning crescent kick. That was mm-hmm. his move back yeah. in the, the 80s. But from what I remember, this is the last movie that he does a 540 kick. Yeah. So I, I read that he, um, so Jackie and his team really, really put like a lot of thought into like everything that was included in the scene, like every kind of set uh, prop and everything like that. Um, and if it, if it's something that um, like Jackie actually kind of had to like use his own money to like go out and buy these props and they, they kind of choreographed and, and laid out the whole scene based on each kind of sequence and, and what they were going to use in each individual sequence. And, you know, cause you can really see it. Like you, you get the refrigerator part, you get the pinball part, you get the bottle part, you know, it all kind of breaks down into sequences. Great scene, but I cannot explain to you the geography of that area though, <laughs> to be honest with you. That's a big warehouse there. They it's have not... a lot of weird different sections on there. I feel like they probably just cleared out a corner and put fridges in there. And it's like, this is another section. It's like yeah. another room. Cause that gate, that he gets pushed into. That's basically right next to where he's finding Tony. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was. Where, you, where the hell's the pinball room? <laughs> it was right next to the gate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I get what you're saying. You know, what I, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I cannot for the life of you, me explain to you the well, geography you know, of that. Four-year-old hooligans aren't good at feng shui, so <laughs> they're going to know where to put away everything. <laughs> well, it just goes to show you how creative uh, Jackie can get with a limited budget, right? Mm-hmm. So good for him. Yeah. Um, is this Jackie's best 90s movie? When did Drunken Master 2 come out? 90s? <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. No. Okay. We're going to be discussing a lot of more. I'm just curious. <laughs> All right, another serious question. Look at me. <laughs> I'm making eye contact. <laughs> Jackie Chan's speech at the end. Why lower yourself? Don't you know you're the scum of society? Is it better than Rocky's speech at the end of Rocky IV? <laughs> If I can change, and you can change, everybody can change. I don't know, man. Rocky IV stopped, like, the whole Cold War and everything. So more of an impact than on these 40-year-old hooligans, I'd say. <laughs> but the part when Tony goes, what did he say? Did he really mean that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of love, like, Tony, like, respecting Jackie at that. He's like... Yeah, you beat our asses. Now get out of here. <laughs> get out of here, you son of a bitch. That's usually how it goes. <laughs> out of five, how do you want to rank this? Oh, it's a five out of five. I, I love the sequence. I could rewatch this over and over again. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Five out of five for myself. I mean, Jackie in that outfit, that's like an iconic outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Even when he takes off the jean jacket? Yeah, the, yeah, without the jean jacket. That's iconic 90s Jackie Chan for me. Sleeveless tee. Because remember, I had a sleeveless tee once, and you were like, Hey there, Jackie from Rumble in the Bronx. <laughs> yeah. Was it black? It, it was, was black, wasn't it? <laughs> Next thing we're going to break down. I labeled this scene Hubbercraft Horror. <laughs> 
The setup. Diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> I actually Jesus. wrote that. <laughs> Wait, in all caps? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Okay. Let me say it again. The setup. Diamonds. White Tiger wants his diamonds. <laughs> Kyung had them but lost them. After a botched meeting, uh, White Tiger's goons take over a hovercraft and go on a rampage. <laughs> diamonds. <laughs> Was that all caps you wrote that then? <laughs> Possibly. Maybe. So, so what, what was their plan? Like, we're going to escape the FBI by rampaging in Vancouver. I mean, <laughs> well, first off, I want to touch on the FBI or the cops or whatever precinct they were in. Because these were like the most bumbling, like, they, they were pretty terrible cops overall. Like, they, they, they had to use this. Well, I didn't know he was a cop. So they had to use this civilian, basically, to catch the bad guys. But these guys were terrible at their job. What about the wire guy? Good. <laughs> He's good. He's good. good. <laughs> All right. Good. Uh, or oh, the guy man. that gets shot in the, uh, in the vest. He's like, you okay? Yeah, man. I'm okay. <laughs> She's like, okay. <laughs> That's cool. So we have to talk about the broken ankle. Yep. As most of you should know. If not, now you know. Jack- <laughs> Jackie broke his ankle. Jumping onto the hovercraft. <laughs> Jumping on the hovercraft, broke yep. his ankle. He did it before Tom Cruise. Sorry. He's cooler. <laughs> yep. <laughs> A total of five people were crippled making this movie. Oh, there's a lot of injuries. A lot so, of injuries. Francois yeah. Yeep broke her leg on yep. the motorcycle scene. Yep. Two stunt women also broke their legs in the motorcycle scene. And oh, poor little Stanley Tong sprained his ankle. And he was on crutches. All leg injuries. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Joking, Stanley, you're a badass. Don't, don't kill me. <laughs> so I felt like using the hovercraft was like kind of a pretty cool and like innovative idea. Um I just I don't I have a tough time believing like how well a hovercraft would actually stand up to the amount of damage that it was like taking, <laughs> like all the things it was like hitting all those cars and just like going through city streets and stuff. I don't feel like it would hold up. <laughs> um, yeah, it was definitely new. <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty cool idea. Yeah. Good like, idea. Good idea on paper. <laughs> like that stunt Jackie does, where he rolls off the hovercraft and underneath the trailer truck. Yeah, that's really that cool. is so dangerous. Yeah, really <laughs> good for cool. him. Yeah. So I want to talk about the scene where Jackie grabs the kid before the hovercraft comes. Mm-hmm. When I rewatched it, um, I was watching it as like a filmmaker's perspective. I'm like, ah, the hovercraft's not that close. They're probably using a telephoto lens to make the, Im- the image closer than it actually is. Okay. But then if you watch the flags, it's literally right where the kid is. When Jackie grabs the kid, the hovercraft actually tips the flags over like seconds after. Oh, shit. So yeah. it was close. Yeah. <laughs> Poor kid. I hope she got paid a little. <laughs> yeah, she's fine. Shout you, out to. Do you think he really got run over by the hovercraft? Like, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. They basically yeah. like dug a little sand yeah, yeah. thing for yeah. him. That's pretty cool. Still, man. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> Plus, like his whole like water skiing part that that felt painful. Like just like him skidding. Like, and then you, you obviously you see in the outtakes and like him like falling off or whatever and like crashing through the water at those speeds like i don't know i'm not sure how fast the boat was going but that looks painful as hell well the shot of him holding on is obviously him but yep. all the ones from behind where he's going off ramps yeah that's not him oh really that's okay. not him. still movie respect. magic <laughs> folks <Yeah. laughs> shout out to stanley tong for driving the lambo he's doing like uh all the car stunts nice nice stanley tong's a badass man he is <laughs> Out of five, how do you want to rate this? Uh, not a not a great finale for me. I I wanted more Jackie action and I actually forgot about this scene. Really? Yeah. Yeah. When Overall. I was rewatching, I was like, oh yeah, there's a oh yeah, there. there's there's still another ending. We yeah. still gotta get White Tiger. Hey, he has a giant sword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's a two out of five for me. I I didn't like the scene and White Tiger just he's a fucking joke. He's terrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I'll be kinder. I'll give it a three, only uh. because of the stunt work involved, mm-hmm. um, the Jackie stunts on and yeah. off the helicopter. Yeah, I guess I should add Hover a crap, sorry. point five or a point for Jackie breaking his ankle and continuing on after. Next up, we got ratings and rankings. Rate our hero, ki Out of five, what do you give him? What did I give him? Uh, I gave him a five out of five. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go right I off I gave him a bat. ten out of five. <laughs> I, I did it. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's, this is what introduced me to the legend of Jackie. And, and from here, after this, I 
went back and wa- rewatched all of his legendary movies. So, yeah, absolutely. How could I not give him a five? From He's here? the perfect everyman. Yeah. That gets stuck in these situations. Mm-hmm. I don't. I hate it when people are like, oh, Bruce Willis, Die Hard, the everyman. He's like a pretty, pretty fit, <laughs> taller guy. <laughs> Whereas Jackie is just like a smaller Asian guy who gets involved <laughs> in the situations and god damn it he finds a way to win. <laughs> He's so trained though. Bruce Willis has no none of that kung fu training. <laughs> Next up we got uh White Tiger. <laughs> Radar yeah. villain, White Tiger. I give him a two. <laughs> you gave him a two. Alright, generous. I give him one. He does nothing in this movie except play golf. And then gets run over and you get to see his ass. Yeah, that's that's not a. I just love his line delivery. <laughs> Where are my diamonds? <laughs> Reminds me of the Revenant. Where is Pavica? <laughs> yeah, not a fan. Where are my diamonds? <laughs> Next, I've got top three badass characters. Did you get three? Yeah, yeah, you got three. Hell yeah! <laughs> Number three is the White Tiger goons. I want to see your boss, White Tiger. Stupid! Don't mention White Tiger. Our boss is not White Tiger. If your boss is not White Tiger. <laughs> all of them? No, the, anyone the, specifically? During the diamond heist, when the when they were like hunting Angelo, and then the cops showed up, and the white tiger goons, they just throw their guns and they like just stare at the oh, yeah. cops they're like, just, yeah, they were like walking up the uh, the yeah. stairs so casually, just yeah. so blindly. I'm like, is that good acting or bad acting? I don't know, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> it worked for me. It worked. It. it looked badass, <laughs> especially that part where uh, the, he's driving the hovercraft, yeah. the old guy's driving it, and yeah. uh, the other goon. He's like, run her over. He's like, no. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he grabs it. Just do that, it. He makes that face. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, really not intimidating. <laughs> yeah, very comical, actually. Uh, number three, I got Danny, even though I actually kind of actually found him annoying. I hate that kid. Yeah, I, I really hated it. I just, I, I put him here more as a joke because like, to see a kid be so happy to play a Sega Game Gear that has no game in it. He's just playing on a blank screen. Because if you watch that screen or uh, watch that scene when Jackie gives him that game console, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's nothing there's in nothing there. there. <laughs> there's nothing there. He's like, ah, I'm so happy. Ah, my uh, sister has diamonds. Yeah. But I, I do like that sequence where like um him and Jackie are kind of getting tortured by the white tiger goons. Yeah. And he's like throwing Jackie, like escalating... Uh, weapons to like hit the goon with that that was pretty funny so. i just like that scene how he's like my sister has diamonds <laughs> and the goon just throws at him ah <laughs> yeah but overall i hate that kid <laughs> uh number two i gave it to nancy 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 francois yeep francois yeep yeah. she had a bit of a run too yeah she did did two movies with I, had, jet. I had a big crush on her so yeah she did two movies with jet yep romeo, romeo must, must die, die and black mask i remember that <laughs> So broke her leg too. So yeah, badass leg, in real life. <laughs> kicks a bunch of motorcycles down. Mm-hmm, Good mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, number one, Tony. <laughs> what the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> what the hell do you think you're doing? You asshole. <laughs> Greatest line delivery ever. <laughs> He's Canadian, right? Yes, so he is. Yeah. Vancouver. Plus, yeah. he passed. Rest so. in peace. Respect. <laughs> yeah. Respect. Yep. Oh, that's yours too. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. He's number one. Yeah, obviously he's got to be number one. Okay. Yeah, just the you know, like I kind of mentioned before as well, like the respect he showed Jackie after getting his ass kicked. Yeah. I thought you were gonna go with Angelo. <laughs> that ain't the that guy. guy. <laughs> I hate that guy. <laughs> Next question I have is: Has the action aged well? Oh yeah, I. It oh yeah, has. yeah. It, it's better I, than it still everything. amazes me till this day. Yeah. It's better than what we have now. Oh, just I really love the whole refrigerator sequence and just actually most pretty much the whole warehouse sequence. Really, everything about it, I I still can rewatch forever. So, another question, only because it gets asked so often. Yep. Can Jackie fight in real life? The general consensus is that Jackie's kung fu is fake, blah, 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 this mm-hmm. and that. Mm-hmm. But, like, growing up in that, the, the opera house, like, you you really are training. Like, you're, you're, oh, fully, yeah. you're full on training. It's like a Shaolin right? Temple. Yeah. Are they, like, are they sparring as well? No, or are they, no, no, no. It's like it's performance. More performance, right? I'd say yes, mm-hmm. but it's not based on this movie. 
No, no. I wouldn't base it on this movie. No. Yeah. It's based on Wheels on Meals. <sighs> oh, yeah. the with Jet, Anytime he, yeah, he's fighting Benny the Jet. Because he has good form, good jab, good mm-hmm. hooks, good mm-hmm. crosses. Like, you look at that, you're like, okay, that guy knows how to fight. Yeah. He knows how to throw down yeah, yeah. if something happened. Yeah. If it goes to the ground, I'm probably not. But, I mean, stand up, he's good. Let's review that movie next. Or at or at some point, it. we got to review it. Or, or we, just, we like, just talk about it. Benny the Jet. <laughs> Jet <And> Jackie. <laughs> Anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? Um, no, I'm good. I just, I really love Jackie, and I'm so glad I watched this movie when I was 12 years old and got introduced to him and uh, was able to go in to his legendary catalog and revisit all that stuff so oh i got a good one hollywood remake starring liam neeson is it a better movie <laughs> starring liam neeson <laughs> no not with all the cuts you're gonna have to <laughs> endure starring frank grillo <laughs> a little better but yeah whatever. <laughs> okay i don't want to see a hollywood remake well actually maybe i do because i want to see these hooligans now in a <laughs> a 2020 time frame where they're all dressed like they're in 1990 <laughs> hollywood remake the hooligans tony would be played by logan paul Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I would hate him so much. <laughs> what the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just punch that guy. Kill him. <laughs> okay, that does it for this episode. Thanks for listening. We are out. Music for Aethon and Action is done by Mason Tickle. If you like what you heard, please rate, review, subscribe, and we'll be back. See you. Thank you.